Hi, and welcome along to AFTV News Daily. Hope you guys have had yourself a fantastic day. Beautiful weather in the UK. It really has been. We're still under lockdown, um, but the weather's been outstanding. Let, I bet you any money when we come out of lockdown, it starts pouring the rain. <laughs> Always the way. But listen, we've got a special guest tonight. We have got Mark Goldbridge from United Stan in the building. How you doing, Mark? I'm good, Robbie. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, man. Uh, Football's coming back, so I'm a bit excited to, that we're going to be talking about real football and real games rather than just talking about transfer rumours or talking about general rumours around the game or doom and gloom. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. I think that, you know, I think a lot of us wanted it back because we miss football. And I agree with a lot of people who didn't want it back, but I'm sure they'll sit down and watch it now because ultimately, like we spoke about this a few weeks ago, it's about it being safe. And look, there's still a chance. You know, we've all got to stay home and stay safe. It's a hot weekend. Still do social distance because if this infection mm -hmm. rate goes up, we won't have football back. So we've got an opportunity here. And I think it's uh, it's an exciting one, like you say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But um, also with this whole coronavirus thing, we as channels came together, um, AFTV and United Stand, and we did um, this special sort of a, uh, 24-hour charity event. How long ago was that now? It's about a month ago, wasn't it? This lockdown just feels like it's been forever, know. but yeah. It might be about six weeks ago, maybe. I don't know. It was a Saturday, I so... I think, yeah, yeah, I think it was about a month ago or something like that, but we came together. I remember we, we were both talking about it, and we literally put it together in about three days. Um, called upon a lot of people that we know, said to them, we're doing this thing for charity. We're going to do it over 24 hours. Do you want to jump on? Um, we we had loads of guests. You had those brilliant quizzes and stuff like that on your channel. And um, we raised a lot of money. You know what I mean? Um, and now that money's all collated and collected, and we're going to give that to um, the NHS charity. Tell everybody how much we, we raised. So we raised across the two channels over 24 hours. As, as Robbie said, we went, I think we went, did we go... Was it three hours stints we did, wasn't it? Yeah, three hours three stints hours back and forth, yeah. yeah. So £21,515, which is wow. just, you know, absolutely fantastic. And across both channels as well, I think it's it's one of those things that we said at the time that, yeah, look, you know, football's coming back, United Arsenal, but this is about the NHS. This is about saving lives. And this is about football fans. It's not about United or Arsenal or even Chelsea. We had all sorts of fans from all around mm. the world getting involved. So a massive, massive thanks to everyone who got involved in that. And, and, and look, I've done, I've done them. And I know old... What's his name? You did the 20 million walking around his garden. I mean, that was great. But I've yeah. done football. I've done football um, um, donation things before. And I tell you what, 20,000 is, is an excellent effort. Not many yeah. people get that sort of thing. So yeah. fantastic. And, in, in, and in, as, we, as we said, just in a couple of days time, it just goes to show that probably in the future we can do something else like this again. Yeah. Um, but that's fantastic. And, I, you know, I want to thank everybody you know, you guys out there, because you guys were the ones who made the donations. All right, we gave up our time. But um, you were the guys who made those donations out there. And we're, you know, so, so grateful for it. And uh, the NHS charity are going to be grateful for it, I'm sure. 100%. Yeah, it's a massive, massive effort. And, uh, yeah, it's something to really be proud of. And, you know, I think we'll all look back on this time and remember that. And, and also, I think it's going to impact. It has impacted tragically on a lot of lives. But I think also positively it's shown that people can come together. And I know there's a lot going on in the world at the moment, specifically in this UK country, uh, in, um, England, obviously, the country in the UK, politics. That's why I don't get involved in politics, because politics mm. will, will, will divide you. And politics will make you think, oh, I'm not going to bother doing that if he does that. But ultimately, we're all, we're all one nation. We're all one globe. We're all on earth. And we've got through this, especially in this country, because everybody did, or most people did, uh, <laughs> most, lockdown and stuff. Most people. Yeah, yeah. Not some politicians. But yeah, like yeah. Ordinary people did their bit, yeah. Um, but no, it's been absolutely fantastic. And thanks once again to everybody who donated. And as you said, we came together and uh, nice and friendly and that. But that's all over now. Now it's yeah. war. war. The war resumes, right? So that's what now. It's back to same old rivalry, Arsenal, Man United. And I want to ask, it's coming back. So the real stuff is coming back. Who's going to get into the top four? That's what we need. That's, that's going to be because you know what? The thing is about it, 
you're looking at the German thing when you watch the Bundesliga and that, you kind of, you know, look at certain games, you enjoy them. But when these games come back for us, obviously it's our team. So we're really invested in it. Even watching some of the other teams, we're going to be invested in these games because these results are going to matter for us, even some other teams playing. So I think there's going to be so much more interest in it. And every one of these games now matter because we're down to the last, well, we've got 10 games left. Of, I'm not sure how many. Is you got 10 or nine? Nine. We've got nine, yeah, because you've got your game in hand. You've got a game in hand, yeah. So we've got 10 games left, right? Every single one of these games matters because it's vital for us to try and get in the top four, if possible, possibly top five. For Man United, obviously, it's the same thing to get into the top five. But at the moment, those places are occupied by, obviously, Liverpool are going to win the league. You've got Man City, Leicester and Chelsea. You guys are in fifth. We're back down in ninth, but we're only five points behind you with a game in hand. It's really Let's tough. See. It's really yeah. tough. I mean, even just looking at looking at the Premier League, right? Um, you've also, so you, you, you're on 45 points in fifth place. Wolves are two points behind you um, with 43 points. So are Sheffield United two points behind you. They got um, their game in hand the same as you as well. If they, they beat Villa, they're above us. Yeah. yeah, Tottenham, I've got 41 points. And, you know, the dynamics of that's going to change now because they've got some of the injured players back. And yeah. we've got 40 points. So those top four places and where Chelsea, you know, occupied by the uh, four spot at the moment, it really is up for grabs, isn't it? I think it is. I think, uh, you know, I could, I could banter you and say, you know, we're not rivals, your rivals are Everton. But I think you're in the same position as we are where your five points behind us and we're sort of three points and I even think eight points behind I see if, if I'm saying we're gonna we can catch Leicester with eight points and I think mm -hmm. we'll, we'll probably go through the fixtures I think we can and why can't Arsenal catch Chelsea or United or anyone like that and you know you have got City but it's it's like a brand new game it's I, I've watched a bit of the Bundesliga and one thing that really came through to me was the teams that have uh, kept themselves fitter mm. really have done well and you know, I've seen De Bruyne, pictures of him this week. He looks like he's uh, one of those players, a bit like Rooney. I'm not calling him fat or anything like that, but I think we all know body physics. Some players, mm -hmm. like Lingard's brilliant at keeping fit. Like, he, he just naturally stays fit. Whereas I think some players, Sancho as well, they've had a couple of months off and you can see it. Whereas, mm -hmm. So I think fitness levels will be important. So you never know in that City game that what Arsenal could do. And I think with United, uh, we've got Spurs' first game, which is a bit of a pain. You sort of want to play a maybe a Bournemouth or someone like that first, because that's mm. a massive game. If you lose that game, it almost knocks you for six. So, um, yeah, I thought, look, I agree with you. I think football back, I've watched a bit of the Bundesliga, but we had Todd Cantwell on the channel with Flex a few weeks ago from Norwich. And I'd, I would watch Norwich play Brighton at the moment, because I think we have mm. got the best league in the world. And I think this it's our league. So, look, you've got a match every day, haven't we, for six weeks? I think the first two weeks, I'll watch every game. About three weeks in, I'll probably start binning off the Burnley game and everything like that. But mm -hmm. for the first couple of weeks, there's so Liverpool are going to win the league. Crack on, they deserve it. They're not even part of this for me. I think it's what's going on in the race for top four, the relegation, mm -hmm. the Europa League spots. I think I can't wait. Yeah, and, and every game is going to mean something. So you'll be watching other games with interest, like your game against Tottenham. Yeah. I'll be watching that game and I'll be like, well, what's the best result for Arsenal? Um, is it a draw? Is it a Tottenham? Well, no, I never back Tottenham, even though it's you lot. But um, Probably you a know, draw, you, isn't it? <laughs> you look, you're looking at these games, you know what I mean? They, they, all these games are going to matter. And every yeah. game for your team, unless you're Liverpool, when they'll probably wrap up the league pretty quickly, every game is going to matter. Every single Arsenal game is going to matter. Every single one of your games are going to matter. It's that time of the season. So, like you said, it's who hits the ground running. It's who's fit, ready to go, rearing to go, that's going to really benefit from this. Yeah, I do. I, I think, I think, yeah. And look, you touched on Spurs as well. I don't really think Spurs are that good, but you add in Bergwijn, Kane and Son, and they're a lot better. I, I definitely think we were going to beat them that last game before lockdown. Um, just, you know, Mourinho might have scrapped a nil-nil, but be different now. Um, but then we've got Pogba Rashford back. I don't think there's a club who's actually got an injury coming back. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't think of a player mm. that's got a long-term injury. Even City, like Sane and Laporte, I think they're yeah. back as well. Yeah. Um, 
So it's like a, it's a mini season, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. we'll probably hopefully, and I really hope we'll never have this again. But what we're going to get is something quite unique and exciting, like a, a festival of uh, summer football. Because you're in the FA Cup as well. So I was saying mm. we could play. We get to the FA Cup final, and I'd expect us to get to the semi final. That's twelve games for us between June the twentieth and August the first. So you're basically playing a game every sort of four days. So it's gonna, mm. it, it will be like a bit of a longer. We're not getting the Euros, but it's going to be like a summer tournament. It's going to be so much football uh, mm. in a short space of time. Do you think it's going to benefit teams like Man United that's got big squads with a lot of quality throughout it? Because this is going to come into play now. You know, you've got some teams like, say, a Sheffield United have got a good first team yeah. and they work off a fairly small squad and more or less throughout the season, they play that team week in, week out. But we've already seen, you mentioned it earlier, we've already seen with the Bundesliga that fitness is, um, I saw Sancho, he don't look fit. He, he doesn't look fit. He looks like he's carrying a couple of extra pounds. Doesn't look fit. You could see he was blowing early in the games. They've used him sparingly. There's been some other players like that as well. Right, so do you think that those teams have got a small squad are going to be at a disadvantage? And teams like Man United, I suppose Arsenal you could put into that category as well, although I wouldn't say our squad's deep enough. But you guys have got a deep squad. It's going to benefit teams like you, isn't it? 100%, because if you think about a team like Leicester, who I think we can catch, they've got some tough fixtures. I think they've got to play, they've got to play you, they've got to play us, they've got to play Spurs. And I think they might lose games to teams like Watford. Well, Leicester have done well this year because they play on a Saturday. They don't play till the following Saturday. We've, we've mm. been in Europe. Um, now, that's not going to happen. Everyone's going to have to play forward every four days. And also, I think that there will be injuries. Like, if you think about it, like, when has a footballer ever had what will be three months off without any football? Even, if you, even in the summer, you get a month top mm. and then you're back pre-season, pre-season games for six weeks before you play a Premier League game. These lads are going in with a bit of bloody home, home, you know, treadmill stuff, a bit of contact training for three weeks, and then straight into a competitive Premier League game. There will be a lot of injuries. And the problem with those injuries is I think they will be muscle injuries, like hamstrings and things like that. And if you get a player like a Martial or a Bamiyan gets a hamstring injury in the first game, they're probably not back till because it's only six weeks, isn't it? So your squad depth is going to be really important because I think on average, every every club will lose two or three players in that six weeks period where they're out for the whole lot because they get a, a muscle injury or something like that. And the games are coming so thick and fast. How do teams like Bournemouth cope with the, without a squad? Mm. You know, I'm not a big fan of people like Mata and Pereira and Lingard, but it could be worth their weight in gold. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think definitely the teams that have got uh, the big squads. And do you think as well that it's going to benefit the big teams? I think we've kind of seen that already in the Bundesliga that, those big teams now going away to, you know, the smaller clubs, they haven't really found it a problem. You know what I mean? Whereas before, you know, you're going away to Burnley or you're going away to Bournemouth or all these clubs and, you know, Brighton, and they can really get their fans up for that game and that gives their players an extra. Now it's just ability versus ability. There's no crowds there. I think yeah. it's seen in Germany, it has not it has benefited the big powerhouses by a lot. I think um United and Arsenal, even though we've not been title contenders for a while, we're probably the two clubs in the Premier League era that have always had that. You know, I, I remember Wenger's team going to Bolton and you'd always expect Bolton to win it and United, mm. you know, everywhere is a cup final. And that still happens now, even though we're not the teams that we were. It's still Arsenal are coming to town or United yeah, are coming yeah. to town. And I, I, I spoke about this a couple of days ago. I think that with, with these games, and we've seen it in the Bundesliga, like you say, it's still going to be high level, but it's going to be more in a player's head. It's going to be more about talent because it, they'll play it professionally, but there ain't going to be uh, a Todd Candwell um, clatter in a Bamiang and the crowd go, Way! for 10 minutes and, and Arsenal are under pressure. That won't happen. That, so it's going to be ability against ability. And that's not to say that, you know, United or Arsenal won't have a bad day at Carrow Road, but there won't be a crowd there to to intimidate. Or I just think we've all done it. You know, you've stood in front of crowds and spoken. I've stood it. I've stood it. I've presented things, and you feed off a crowd. So if you are the underdog, you can use that. Or it's like a boxing match, isn't it? Or anything like you can feed off the crowd to make yourself believe. 
Well, if you haven't got that crowd, it's it just becomes like a game of chess and the better player should win. So I think it'd be interesting. And I think the evidence, like you say, is there in the Bundesliga with some of the results. I mean, our Leverkusen got battered 4-1 at home. I was saying to Flex in the week, that, Leverkusen are a good side. That would never happen if mm. Leverkusen had their fans there because they might go one or two down, the crowd would go mad and the players would respond to it. But because they haven't got the crowd and it's just a game in an empty stadium, that 2-0 turns into a 4-1 and you'd never mm. predict that. So I think yeah. we will get, I think it will favour the big teams more, I would expect, yeah. A bit like the game, a bit like the game on Tuesday gone with uh, Dortmund Bayern, where yeah, yeah, um, very good game, very competitive game. Um, Bayern winning one nil, but no yellow wall, no, you know that that was a crunch game, right? Now you can imagine how up for it Borussia Dortmund's fans would have been, but none of them would it. So it was just again, like you said, it just comes down to ability versus ability. Two teams of a. Uh, Similar abilities, but I think Bayern have obviously got more quality and it shone through. They won the game. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a strange running. It's going to be a strange running. And you still got all the same sort of things because you, you're still going to have teams that, like, say, your Watfords, your Villas and that, that are desperate to, they're going to be still hard to beat because they're looking to try and stay in the league. But without that crowd behind them, I, I don't expect those smaller teams to get a lot of good results. I think tactically it's going to be interesting as well because if you look at your first game against Man City, which was going to be the Etihad, you would go to that game and you would definitely be wary of Man City and play deep. If that's at the Emirates, you would probably be a little more expansive because you're at home. You're now playing on a neutral ground. So do you go, oh, it's Man City, you can pop the ball about. Do we go deep? Or do we go, it's a neutral ground? Well, it's not a neutral ground. It's, it's a, mm. Well, I actually think it is a neutral ground, isn't it? You might play some of them at neutral grounds. They haven't but said effectively, they are, aren't they? So. Yeah. <laughs> How do you approach it? Yeah, they haven't, they, they have, they've actually said that there could be some of the big games. So, like, say, your game, United, Spurs, our city, that could be played on neutral grounds. Um, but they haven't said, they haven't confirmed that yet. I don't, but like you said, it's... It's not even like, say, you have a, t you know, obviously the home team will be used to their ground. Yeah. But they're not used to playing on their ground where it's empty. So it's still... Well, Bayern Munich, you're on about Bayern Munich. They didn't play like Bayern Munich. They played like they were playing Dortmund at Dortmund. They played on the counter. And I was like watching mm. it thinking, well, it works, but it was a bit weird because it's like, why are you being so respectful of Dortmund? If it was at Munich, you they'd mm. be sitting back. So you're like... Some clubs are still approaching an away tie, even though there's no fans, with that same approach. And it's, uh, yeah. you, you're like, well, actually, you don't, what, what's your, why do you need to worry about them? Because they haven't got mm. the crowd, which is the reason you're probably thinking, let's sit back a bit. But mm. yeah, it's a weird one. It's, well, it's unprecedented, like we said. It's exciting, but it's, and it'll probably never happen again, hopefully, but it's, it is interesting, the dynamic mm. of it. But I, I would much rather have it than not. I, I don't, fans are the lifeblood of football. We know that. We both run mm. fan channels, but. I would rather we had this than, than, than nothing, I think. it's Yeah, uh, I, I, I didn't want the season to finish like where things are just getting handed out, like what we've seen in France and we've seen in Belgium and Holland. And, and I think those leagues now, even though it weren't really their fault because I think a lot of it was sort of government-led, but they, if you're a player now, you're thinking, I don't want to play in those leagues. I'd rather play in one or the other. Because, you know, Serie A's coming back, La Liga's coming back, we're coming back. And, of course, the Bundesliga are back. That's kind of almost like it's cemented those leagues as the leagues of the game, isn't it? Well, some of them won't play football for middle of March till middle of September. That's, 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 a, that's a long time. And, yes, if you're like Donny van der Beek or Mr. Dembele, you're like, bloody hell, I wish I did play in the Premier League or something like that. And mm. to be honest, maybe they will be because also you look at Ajax, you look at Lyon, they must be losing so much money. Yeah. They've got so many players might be opportunities for clubs like ourselves and you to mm. uh, pop in and get some of those players, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the runnings then. Um, on Man United, right, You've the games you've got left to play, you've got uh, Villa away, Brighton away, Palace away, uh, Leicester away, and then you've got uh, Sheffield United at home, West Ham at home, Southampton at home, Bournemouth at home, and of course the the one that you spoke about, Spurs away. So, uh, what would you? That's not too bad a running, is it? 
Because you haven't got Liverpool, you haven't got City in there. You haven't got us in there. No, you, to be fair, you have beat us a couple of times in the last two years and I wouldn't, I, w- I wouldn't really fancy that one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I look at it that the Leicester game is quite difficult, but I assume we win it because then it makes the gap five points and that's why I think you can catch Leicester. So hmm. Spurs, is, Spurs is the horrible one because it's the first one and if you win that, I would expect United to get top four because I don't think, as we were saying, look, Sheffield United are a good team, Villa will be fighting for their lives, Bournemouth will as well. I just don't see, and I'd say the same with Arsenal if they can sort themselves out, how do those teams go into a ground that's got no fans and beat teams that have got Aubameyang, Pogba, Rashford, Bruno Fernandes? You know, mm. no, I'm not saying Aubameyang signed for United. I was just, I was going to mention some Arsenal yeah, United yeah. players, that, you know, Zaka and everything like that. I just think, I, I mean, we might be wrong, but I think quality will come through here. The, the danger will be the relegation sides because I think, if you can get a pack mentality like a Watford, where you stand in the middle and you go, look, we haven't got any fans, but we're for each other, that might work. But mm. I think United have got a very good opportunity to win all their games um, if they beat Spurs. But I think it will come down to that Spurs game. Um, mm. So, yeah, but but let's not forget, United are on... Ta- on if Ollie's got to basically win every game to get as our best ever... Uh, to, to avoid getting our worst ever Premier League points total. 64 was 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 Moyes. We're on 45. So he needs, what, 19 points from 27 games. So he's got to virtually win every game to not have our... And that's something I always say to United fans is, yeah, Ollie's at the wheel again because we've got Bruno and Rashford and Pogba back. But we have had a really bad season. So mm. saying we're going to win every game... I think we can do, but actually the evidence suggests that that might not happen. But I think I think I think we are turning a corner now. We've got big players coming back. But I think that Spurs game. If you lose that, confidence is gone, isn't it? So that's that's a massive game to have back first. A bit like your your game against City. I think mm. you almost want them to be three or four games in, but it's just you can't change yeah, the fixtures. Yeah. That's what we're going to be. That's the first game. I was hoping because I thought that what they do is they go with the first set of games that were due that weekend. Right, because that game against City, that was remember that was going to be the Wednesday night before it all everything shut down. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that got postponed because there was a couple of coronavirus cases there. But obviously, the TV people have rubbed their hands together and said, "Wow, what a game to start off with!" Um, because otherwise, we would have started off with Brighton, which I would have been a way more confident of going there and getting a result. But if I if I just run through Arsenal's remaining games, we got ten. And um, in those 10 games, we've also got Spurs. So that's a tough game for us. We've got to go away to there. And um, even though there'll be no crowds, of course, it it will still be a very uh, high-level game. We've got Southampton away. We've got Manchester City, as we know. That's going to be the first game. Brighton away. Um, Aston Villa away. Uh, We've got Norwich at home. Leicester at home. Liverpool at home. And Watford at home. So I look in that as well, and I also feel, and, you know, it's all down to fitness, but the the danger games that I look in there, that I say they're the real tough ones, is obviously the City one. The Spurs one is is a tough game, obviously. Um, Leicester, we got a very good record against Leicester at home. Very good record. Um, Away is not good, but at home. The Liverpool one will also be tough, but it could be that by the time Liverpool come to us, they've already won the title. So yeah, 100%, yeah. will they be going all guns or will they sort of ease off? I don't know. Um, it's hard to say because if you've already won the league and with all the tiredness and that that's going to be going around, would they then maybe leave out a Salah and a Mane maybe in that game if they played a couple of tough games? And I, I, It's going to be hard to say, but I look at those games and... There's, there's three or four very difficult games in there, but the rest of them are all winnable. Although a lot of those other teams that I'm looking at in there, like Watford, Villa, Brighton, like you said, they're all fighting for their lives. They're all relegation-threatened teams. So those games that normally earlier on in the season, you'd be like, yeah, light work. <laughs> Why do you they weren't light work for us earlier in the season? <laughs> they weren't for us either. <laughs> <laughs> now, those are going to be tough games as well. So... Every game's going to mean something. It's going to be tough out here, man. I think, it, be- I think it, ben, I think it, Ben, I didn't, I mean, obviously I don't look at Arsenal's fixtures, but when you said it, it started to come back to me because I think when you got knocked out of the Europa League, I um, 
I was a li little bit worried because I thought you had a couple of games that were winnable and I don't think you won them. I can't remember what they were. It might have been, I don't think it was Brighton, but you dropped points against teams and I was like, oh, that sort of kept a gap. Oh, no, um, we've been, no, we've been on a decent run. We've been on oh, a thought, decent run. Because remember, remember Arsenal, the only yeah. game we've lost this year is that game against Olympiacos. All right. That's okay. the only game we've lost in the league. Um, you know, we haven't lost the game this year. We've 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 drawn two games, which was against Sheffield United at home, and we should really have won that game. But we drew that game, and we drew with Chelsea that game. We were down at ten men, and we we got the comeback where we drew the game. But we've won. We've won our last three games as well. Oh, so, okay. I must, I must, well, basically, what I was going to say is that I know looking at your last few fixtures, I was a bit concerned about you maybe catching us up. And my big thing was you had a lot of away games against teams I knew would be fighting for their lives, which I think mm. never goes well for Arsenal. But as you say, there's no fans in those games now. So I think that that helps Arsenal out. You've still got some tough games, though. Um, and I, But I agree with you about Liverpool. I mean, one thing about Liverpool, I was thinking this the other day, they're out of the Champions League, they're out of the FA Cup. So as soon as they've won the league, it might be an idea for Klopp to start giving players a rest, considering... Mm. They're talking about the new season starting in September. So you could say to Marnie and Salah, have a bit of a break, have a month mm. off, start the new season, we want to go and win it again. They could have a big advantage there. So mm. you might find with them as your second to last game, you're not playing a very dedicated or even best 11 of Liverpool. So. Yeah, I mean, it will make sense. And plus as well to sort of spread it around and give some of the other players that ain't really played mm. much, give them some um, game time, some of those really good young players they got. So... It really is going to be interesting to see what sort of Liverpool... Because if we was to beat City in that first game back, they literally only got to like win one game and they, and, and they would have won the title. So, it's yeah, it's going to be really, really, really interesting what happens with them. But obviously, the other games are really competitive. And like you said, the, the dynamics of that injured players coming back. I mean, the Tottenham game, for instance... Harry Kane, Sun, like you said, Bergwijn, all back. Sissoko possibly as well. Yeah. That, now, all of a sudden, that's a different Spurs that you're coming up against. You know what I mean? Um, so it's it is going to be it is going to be really. I, I I just feel like we said that those teams with the big squads. It, it it's going to help out a lot. It's going to help out a lot because you know with all the injuries. Um, what about with City? Do, do you think? The fifth place might come into it because have you, what so. have you been hearing about that whole thing? You know, obviously they're appealing that decision. They are in effect at the moment banned from European football next season. Yeah, I think that I've heard that it's going to be the start of June, isn't it? So we'll know, and I hope we do know before the Premier League comes back because I think it's so fair to play blindly. I mean, imagine Arsenal did get fifth, and you know United probably mm. get top four, but whatever, or United get fifth. Um, and then you think you've got it, and then you don't. They need to sort this out quick. I mean, I've heard that, uh, that City are going to chuck a lot of money at it. Surprise, surprise. But look, I, I haven't read a lot about it, Robbie, probably because I just always suspected City. I mean, it's obvious City's been dumped up to something and they've been caught out. The logical thing is that they get banned for at least a year. So mm. fifth place does matter. If you ban them for two years, you can't not ban them for one year. But... I guarantee there's probably some loophole that they found that I can see them getting off with it, really. But I hope they don't because I think they've definitely done something mm. wrong. To be to have the ban in the first place, there's obviously something there. Mm. Um, whether they can get off with a tech on a technicality, I wouldn't be surprised because they've got so much money. But realistically, they should I, they should get at least a ban uh, of one mm. year, I think. But we'll see. Mm. And how, and how do you think that? How do you think United are going to emerge out of this whole coronavirus crisis? Because there's been a lot of talk about, you know, how, I mean, with us, with Arsenal, <laughs> pay cuts and we've done, you know, we, we've already been taking all these drastic measures. I haven't really seen that at Manchester United. And there's been talk that, you know, they've got a lot of reserve cash and they still will spend big. But then I've also heard, I've also heard like Ed Woodward and that come out and saying that don't expect big signings and that. I mean, what, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I keep an eye on things and I see Arsenal being linked to like Dembele again. And I mean, I just don't know how you, mm. you sign players when you've got players taking a pay cut. But at United, they haven't done that. Um, they've spoken about still signing players. Solskjaer's spoken about that. 
Um, he's even sort of hinted at taking advantage of the market. And I, I think I think United need to, if they can. Obviously, they've got a ready-made excuse not to because there will be clubs who can't spend any money. But I, I think United had some momentum. And I think that, you know, we're under no under illusion that we're, we're not going to be winning the title next year. But I think if we could get top four and get Jaden Sancho, I'd like more than that. But that would be a step in the right direction for next season to then hopefully become a top four club and, and get a little bit closer again. If we get anything more than Sancho, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be really happy. But um, yeah, you can't lose sight of the fact that we've had a bad season, really. So to end it well and go into next year, with Champions League football and hopefully Jaden Sancho would be a step in the right direction for United. And I think we've had so many false dawns that we need to, you know, embrace the positivity and hope that that is the signs of things changing because we've got to do it consistently and we've got to eradicate so many of, of the bad results. But I, I, I believe in some, Bruno Fernandes, I think is a fantastic player. Rashford's a great player coming back. Pogba's always going to be, you know, who knows what's going to happen with him. So I'm, I'm, I'm quietly confident with United, but what I'll always say is I wouldn't be surprised if, if we did mess it up and go back to being the inconsistent team we've been for six or seven years. But I'm hopeful that we are turning a corner a bit. Morally, would it be right in this whole coronavirus crisis for Man United to spend £100 million, say, on Sancho? Do you reckon that would look good or do you, do you think that... The owners of United wouldn't care. I mean, it is something that, to consider, isn't it? Because there will be that talk. If a club spends like that sort of money, which is that's the sort of money they're talking about for Sancho. Yeah. That people, I, I don't know. I think it's a great question. And we, I was asked about it the other day and I said, you know, morally, it's not right. People are losing businesses and that's, that's, that's going to happen a lot. But... Who's the most important people to, to Woodward and the Glazers apart from, you know, their bank manager? It's got to be Manchester United fans. And if Manchester United signed Jaden Sancho, will I sit, sit here and go, that's morally wrong? I won't. I'll say, we need that right winger. And Dortmund are morally wrong for charging us that. We've had to pay it to get him. I mean, it is morally wrong, but I'd say the same to Arsenal fans. If you, you know, if Thomas Partey's there for 50 million, do you not pay it because it's morally wrong? Or do you go and get... And I think ultimately that's what clubs will do. If they've got the money, they will gauge their own fan opinion. And Man United fans will be over the moon if we sign Sancho. So, all right, the rest of the world might say it's immoral, but I think United will, will, will deal with it. And I think same with Arsenal, same with Chelsea. They'll go and do the basically, business they can do. Basically, what you're saying is United fans have got no morals. <laughs> well, I, think, I, don't, I don't think football fans do. Have morals. I mean, look at Newcastle with the the Saudi takeover. We were we were linked to them, and I had loads of people in the live comments saying, "I don't care. They're, they're billionaires." And then you got some people saying, I, "I don't want them because they're you know all this dubious stuff." I think football fans are quite immoral when it comes to what they think's best for their football club. Um, mm. I, I, I do. I, I, not not in a way that you know not not criminally or anything like that. But I think if you if you if you ran a poll on your dream signing for Arsenal and said morally should we buy him or should we get him, everyone would go, "Oh, sod it, let's just get him," because that's just <laughs> that's just how we are. We want our club to win, don't we? You know, you've got to be. And also, what what's the problem with it? I mean, we're ruthless. We want to win. It's com it's mm. competition. So, and this is where people will come in and say, "Well, you know, there's there's people suffering with this virus." Exactly, you're absolutely right. But football is so much to so many. Um, and if you're going to do football, if we're going to bring it back, you can't bring it back half-hearted. You bring it back with the competition. We want to beat Arsenal. We want to beat City. So we want to get Jaden Sancho. You know, if we're not bringing it back, we're not bringing it back. Let's not get him. But if we are, you want to be the best you can. Otherwise, there's no point bringing it back. Mm, you touched on Newcastle there. Do you reckon that the whole of the Premier League needs to be worried? I mean, I, I, at first, I, I say, number one, I was glad that those guys didn't take over Man United because I, I was like, if they take over United, it's over for everybody, right? Yeah. But they've taken over Newcastle. They're worth over. We had Matty from the Magpie channel on the other day. And I, I actually asked him that question about it being morally wrong. Right? <laughs> and he basically said he don't care either. And he, and he was also taught. I, I also said to him, when City got taken over by their owners, were you slating it? And he said, yes. But it goes now. It goes now. We're part of that. But yeah, um, they are going to be serious. Their owners are worth. I mean, the city owners. I think they said are worth twenty odd billion. 
these Saudi owners are worth over 280 billion. Mm. And you know what they're like. They're not coming in to finish in the top four. They're coming in to win. So that, again, now offers more competition, again, to us, to you, to every team. In the, I mean, they're going to be a serious threat, aren't they? Maybe, yeah. maybe obviously not straight away. It would take them a year or so. But they're going to be serious. I, I mean, look, I, I probably am in the minority here. I, I wish them all the best. I, I don't know what their are owners are. Right now? <laughs> no, but I, I don't know what their owners are. And, and, you know, the moral things about it, I mean, at the end of the day, you hit the nail on the head. If they were taking Arsenal or United over, there's a lot of Arsenal and United fans who'd be like, I don't care, let's take it. So <laughs> there's a bit of hypocrisy there. But I've seen Blackburn, I've seen Chelsea, and I've seen Man City, and I'm sure you're the same. So I'd sort mm. of feel for Newcastle fans, why the hell shouldn't they be happy about it? You know, why, why, why shouldn't Newcastle get it? Man City were nothing. Chelsea were nothing. Blackburn were nothing. They've all won Premier League titles. So what? Newcastle actually have got a big ground. They've got a big support. So why shouldn't they have it? I think you're right that they will, if they're run correctly, they will be at the top table of football soon and they might dominate it, which makes it harder for United and Arsenal. But I'm, I'm not worried about it at the moment because I'll guarantee you they won't get top four in the next two seasons because the problem they're going to have is it's, the, it's why Newcastle fell apart before. It's, if, it, if it's Fulham with a billionaire owner, they, it's in London. It's in Newcastle, that is. And... They've not got European football, and how yeah. strict will their owners be? I think what they, they keep talking about getting Pochettino, but if you get Pochettino, are they going to expect Pochettino? Do they know football well enough to know that Pochettino won't get them to top four for two years, and will they sack him after eighteen months? It's like who's going to go to Newcastle apart from mercenaries at the moment? They'll get, they might get Kuli they might get Cavani, but it needs what Man City had. It needs to have. They need to be saying. Top four in three seasons is what we want because they need to build the whole infrastructure. They need to get the right sort of players in there that might not be the top of their game now, but will grow there. And Man City's still got money. Liverpool have still got money. United have still got money. Arsenal is still a big club as well. So just because they've got the money, I think it will take a bit of time. But long term, I agree. I think they will become a threat. They're going to be a threat though. I mean, because yeah. whatever we say, and I always say, look across every league in Europe, the clubs who spend the most win the most. Yeah, yeah. And their spending is going to be unlimited. Yes, as soon as they overcome that hurdle of getting into European football, yeah, that's, that's it. when the big turnaround comes with a, you know, and if a manager comes in and that will be his remit and he don't get it, they'll just get rid of it. They're going to do that Chelsea model, I reckon. You know, we the get, problem they got is though, is if they come in this summer and they go, right, Werner will give you two hundred grand a week, Sancho will give you three hundred grand a week. Then, then players won't go because they'll be like, nah, I ain't going to Newcastle. Like, you, you're not in Europe, you're not a big club yet. But like you say, when they do get into Europe, hmm. that's when those players will go, and then that's when teams like us and Arsenal, we're struggling then because then they're it's hmm. like with Man City. Man City, we used to go noisy neighbours. Sir Alex called, called them that. But as soon hmm. as they got into Europe, it was like, oh, shit, they can actually get the players that we want now. And then hmm. and then you can't stop them. They become unstoppable then. Yeah, and then, and then as well, they can go to – it's the thing that they can go to these players and tell them about the project that they're building yeah. and blow teams out of the water with wages. That's yeah. the key to it. And, you know, the, so it's it will take them a little bit, but – they're going to be a serious threat. I mean, the, the Premier League, we've already seen it this season. Apart from Liverpool, it's been very competitive. Everybody can beat everybody. Yeah. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what it's like next season. Um, do you think, Mark, that, I, I mean, behind closed doors, coming back, and that's fine. But we've got to find a way to get fans back in. Do you think we can go a whole season? you know, after we finish this one without no fans? Or do you think that would be it, that would ruin the game? Oh, I think you've got to get fans back as soon as you can. I think people can swallow it for nine games and say, we're doing this to complete the season. And, you know, and I think everyone's OK with that. But when a new season starts, it's always going to be a question every week. When when are we going to get the fans back in? So, and I think the problem you got with Arsenal and United is that they they, they sell out the game every week. If you're... I think if you're a lower league club with a capacity of say twenty thousand or ten thousand, and you only get three, there must be there, there must be a way to social distance where you separate two meters, whatever. You can never do that at the Emirates or Old Trafford because 
even if you halve the capacity and social distance, who are the people who are allowed in and who are the people who aren't? So, mm. you know, it's really difficult. Um, and I think that the only way that this is going to happen is if the virus completely disappears or you get a vaccine. I, f- I don't see how you can have 60, 70,000 people in a football ground. Um, I could, we can all see how you can play football, but how do you get mm. 60, 70,000 people in the football ground? You, you know, two or three times a week, you can't. So... I, d- I don't know. I mean, I'm not. For me, I don't know about you, Robbie. For me, I just want to get this season done. I'm looking forward to it. Then, then we can open the transfer window, and maybe if football comes back in the autumn, great. But you know, I wouldn't be opposed to saying, look, let's wait till spring to bring it back. I know that would be a massive break again, but I don't really like the idea of going into next season without the fans. And yeah. I think the autumn's going to be the time where it comes back, if anything. So. Mm. Well, listen, it's uh, been a pleasure having you on. Uh, once again, you know, it was great working with you um, on that project and very proud that us as two channels stepped forward and were able to raise all this money um, for the charity. But as I said, the truce is now off. So it's Go try and to... catch us now. Go <laughs> try and catch us now. <laughs> the Five truce points. is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, nice, right. it's nice to be ahead of you for a bit actually so five points head start we've got but we're, we're going after Leicester we'll try and give you some scraps yeah, along yeah, the we've way. got a game in hand you know yeah yeah you've got to beat City we've got to beat Spurs you've got to beat City we both win our big rivals win. if we you know what if we can start off with a winning I mean we ain't beaten City for so long but if we was able to pull off a win in that first game the momentum right could go right with us you know what I mean that's such an important game for us it really is um, I'd have, if I was Arteta, I'd have your lads running marathons because I think if you're fitter, you'll win the game. Yeah, yeah. fitness is going to be is going to play a mega part. But yeah. thank you very much, Mark. Um, no worries. And uh, you know, thanks everybody who helped us to raise all that money. And uh, of course, you can check out Mark if you're a United fan on United Stand. I know we get a lot of United fans coming on here. All yeah, right, they're the number one Man United channel, so make sure you check them out. We'll be clashing heads. No doubt, and talking before the end of the season as well. Um, so look out for that. And um, don't forget, we'll be back in the morning. And also, don't forget, I've got a clash tonight, 9.30 um, on Instagram against troops. We're going head-to-head in the sound clash. So make sure you check it out. Have you entered the Blood Brothers online gaming tournament yet? Chance to win £500, PS4 or Xbox, and you'll be taking on people one-on-one. And chance to represent our team doesn't get bigger than that.